And in this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at Tony Tucker and his connection to the club and pub business. Also, his dealings with boxer Nigel Benn. Firstly, we're going to start with some information which was passed on to the police shortly after the murders of Tucker Tatum Rolf. And then interestingly, I found a new statement which ties into that information, which I'll then read out to you. Lastly, this is going to be followed on by quite a bizarre telephone call which was received by the News of the World concerning information surrounding these murders. Hello. Hello, please. Yeah, what's the problem, sir? Um, we've just slowed down our farm track. Yeah. Go and uh, feed our pheasants. We've come across a Range Rover with three people in it. Yeah. It appears that they're dead. I don't know what's happening. Blood in the motor all over them. <laughs> And welcome back to a new video on the Essex Boys case. As always, if you are enjoying the content, please do give the video a thumbs up. And if you're interested in the Essex Boys case, or simply true crime in general, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. The following police printout is from the 8th of December 1995, where it states the following. Action number A1382. A man named Marco, who is an Italian, runs the Jake and Elwood pub on the A13 at Dagenham. He is a well-known villain. He organises the bouncers for pubs and other things. He doesn't hold the licence for the pub, as he has convictions. One of those bouncers is a man named Steve Moon, who is a bouncer for Nigel Benn. He is now running the Phoenix Club in Harlow. This job was arranged by Marco. Both these pubs are owned by a company called Pubmaster, which is owned by John Marsden, who is very anti-drugs. One of the people shot in the Range Rover is a man called Tucker, who was a bouncer for Ben. There may be a connection in all of this to do with the drug scene. Okay, now this appears to be some information that the police received from an anonymous source. But yet again, what strikes me first regarding this information is the fact that it was received just 24 hours after the bodies were discovered. So I'm not even sure if they actually released the names at such an early stage. I can't be sure if they actually released the names within a 24-hour period after the Range Rover was actually discovered. But interestingly there, it mentions that one of the men shot in the Range Rover is called Tucker. So that's Tony Tucker, who was a bouncer for Ben. There may be a connection in all of this to do with the drug scene. Now, having taken a look back at the newspaper articles from that date, the 8th of December 1995, it does appear actually that the names of all three victims were released just 24 hours after the discovery of the bodies. And this wasn't just in one newspaper, but multiple newspapers on the 8th of December. Let's just take a look at one from that date with the title, Three Shot Dead in Drug Trap Blown Away. Three men were executed in a gangland ambush yesterday, just two miles from a huge drugs drop. Each had been blasted in the head with a shotgun as they sat in a metallic blue Range Rover. One of the victims was a former bodyguard of boxer Nigel Benn called Tony Tucker, we can exclusively reveal. Hard man Tucker was gunned down with two associates after being lured to what detectives believe was a drug deal down a lonely farm track used by courting couples. Known cocaine dealer Patrick Tate, 38, who also had form for robbery, was another found dead in the blood-splattered Range Rover, with third man Craig Rolfe. Powerfully built Tate from Essex once staged a daring Great Escape-style motorbike getaway from court after appearing in the dock on drugs charges. The trio, unable to turn round in a narrow lane, were trapped like rats when the killers opened fire through the windows of the vehicle. As police searched for clues, footprints and tyre marks in the thawing snow, they were looking at links with a £1 million cannabis haul in and around a nearby pond seven weeks ago. Detectives believed the drugs could have been part of a big shipment lost as it was dropped from a low-flying plane. Or it may have been left by a bungling gang who forgot which pond they had hid it in. The track where the blood-soaked Range Rover was discovered in Essex early yesterday led to an isolated fishing lake owned by farmer Peter Theobald of White House Farm. It was discovered by Mr Theobald and farmhand Ken Jiggins. 
The cannabis was found scattered at nearby Tanfield Tai in West Hanningfield. Farmer Jan Halstrup, who found it, said he believed the drugs were linked to the killings. Dutch-born Mr Halstrup said, quote, First of all, we found a little parcel of drugs when we were doing some of the hedges. I put it on the fire. Then there were another piece the size of a video cassette in my pond. Police later recovered a staggering 53 packets of cannabis wrapped in black plastic and weighing 336 pounds. Drivers found a further 19 packets. One cop said, quote, he had never seen anything like this before. It's remarkable. Police are trying to discover if the killings were connected with a shooting some days ago near a little chef calf where three men were seen running away. The bodies in the Range Rover were found just 300 yards from the busy A130 Chelmsford to South End Road at Rettenden, Essex. The near side front window had been shot out. Two bodies were in the front of the vehicle and one was in the back. Detective Superintendent Ivan Dibley said there were no signs of a struggle, suggesting they were surprised by the cold-blooded killers. He added, quote, It looks as if they've been enticed down there, or they may have been arranged to be down there. And he added, The three men are known to us as criminals. They were understood to all come from Essex. The Range Rover had to stop at a five-bar gate which was locked. On the other side of it were fields leading to the trout pond. Mr Dibley said, quote, The wounds are consistent with wounds from a shotgun. He added, There is quite a lot of blood contained in the vehicle. Mr Dibley said that at least one shotgun was used and the majority of its force was contained inside the vehicle. The condition of the body suggested they had been killed on Wednesday night or early yesterday. All three had been shot through the head and he added, quote, Whoever killed these people are clearly very dangerous and to that extent I am concerned that they are at large. Police who sealed off the area after the bodies were found were carrying out a careful search of the area looking for clues. Post-mortem examinations are due to be carried out today. Okay, so we can certainly gather there from the newspaper articles which were released just 24 hours after the bodies were discovered that the names were released incredibly quickly. So this doesn't mean that someone's got in touch with the police and they potentially know something that the normal public wouldn't be in receipt of. So this person's rung up and said, you know, Tony Tucker was one of the people in the Range Rover. Well, that's already been released to the press, so that isn't actually anything special. What I do find quite interesting, however, looking at this piece of information from this anonymous source, is that he talks about a John Marsden who is very anti-drugs. Now, I think this also could tie in with the general public perception early on after these murders. You know, the fact that this could be tied in with the death of Leah Betts. Was this simply a retribution killing? I think overall, unless you were around in those days, unless you actually know the pub that's talked about some of these names which are mentioned, it's kind of hard to really form any decent connection between any of these individuals and the death of Tucker Tate and Rolf. I also find, I guess, the idea of a retribution killing regarding drugs, I guess, a little bit far-fetched. Some people do say, you know, this was connected to Leah Betts. Her dad was, you know, a retired policeman. But I think in terms of motives, for me, at least personally, it's one of the less likely ones. The following police statement is from Stephen John Love, dated the 11th of January, 1996. I am employed as the manager for the Phoenix Public House, Tilwicks Road, Harlow, Essex. I have held this position since the 9th, 95. Up until yesterday, the 10th of January 1996, I ran this pub with my girlfriend Penny Pattimore. Penny and I split up yesterday and she has now moved out. The lease for these premises is owned by a company called John Marsden Inns. John Marsden being the managing director. The actual building is owned by Courage Breweries. We employ five to six part-time barmaids and a cleaner. Prior to working at the Phoenix, I was employed as a manager for one month at Flax Pub in Braintree. Prior to this, I was a self-employed carpet fitter and worked as a doorman at various pubs several nights a week. These pubs included the Jake and Elwood pub at Dagenham, Kings at Ilford and Flax at Braintree. The Jake and Elwood pub was run by a person called Marco Woods. Marco is a director for John Marsden Inns. Marco recommended me to John Marsden for the manager's job at Flax. 
I've been asked by DC Cole to describe my association with Nigel Benn. I met Nigel Benn through his manager Peter De Freitas. I know Peter and his brother Steve very well. I went to school with Steve and Peter used to be a carpet fitter. I was never officially employed as a minder for Ben. I would attend his fights through free tickets from Peter and I would assist if there was ever any trouble. An example of this is when Nigel Ben fought in Italy in 1991 and we had to assist Ben back to the changing rooms and fend off the crowd. This continued on and off until Don King came on the scene approximately 18 months ago. I have also been asked by DC Cole if I had heard about the triple murder at Rettendon, Essex. I heard about this incident on the news. I saw the pictures of the three deceased males. Craig Rolf, Tony Tucker and Pat Tate. I did not recognise any of them. I also heard on the news that Tony Tucker had at some stage been a minder for Ben. It is therefore possible that I have met him at some stage at one of the fights but I do not recall it. DC Cole also asked me if I have ever held the name Moon. I have never been known by any other names. I would add that John Marsden Inns does have a pub in Tottenham called JJ Moons. I've also been asked if I can recall my movements on Wednesday the 6th of December 95 and Thursday the 7th of December 95. I can say that I was working at this pub throughout that Wednesday night. I slept as usual on the premises until the following morning. I have no knowledge or information to offer regarding the shooting of Tucker, Tate or Rolf and was definitely not in the Rettendon area of Essex on the night of their murders. The following is a narration of a police printout and transcript of a tape recorded interview with an anonymous source. The date of this document is the 10th of December 1995, where it states the following. Last night, anonymous mail rang News of the World, said he'd been offered £30,000 to kill Tucker and Tate. Rolf was only killed because he was with them. This was offered two weeks ago. The police have been to his relatives twice already, so now he is 100 miles away from London. The rendezvous for the murder was arranged by Wally Nichols from Canning Town. Frank Warren puts up the money for their drug deals. He knows that the victims had upset the Tibbs family. The tape from the answer machine is with Fitzmorris, arrangements made to collect it AM 11th of the 12th 95 from Fitzmorris. The following is a narration of that telephone conversation. Okay, so what do you know? Well, I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to name names or anything. No? Well, I was offered the contract to kill the three fellas. Or two of them. Right. Say that again, you were offered the contract to do what? To kill two of them. Yeah, which two? You're not taping this, are you? No, no. Are you sure? Well, yeah, look, if we tape it, you normally hear a beep beep on the line, but... You know, so what can you tell us about it? Why were they killed? <laughs> it's not over that Leah Betts, that's one thing I'll tell you. Right, what is it about then? It's the biggest gang war going on, mate. Since the craze ran London, you know, the craze and the Richardsons. Right. They weren't top-notch geezers. Tucker was a bit top-notch. Right. Tate was one of his henchmen, but Rolf's a nothing. He's a nobody. Tucker was, yeah, I mean... I mean, I've heard that they've double-crossed somebody on a drug steal and that's why they were killed. <laughs> Bollocks, mate. Well, come on then, so what's the truth? Well, how you heard that then? You know what I mean. Well, just one of our snouts, you know. He's told us that. I mean, but you've probably heard a hundred stories. Yeah, so come on. What's it all about then? It's all about who's going to run what, mate. You know what I mean? Work it out for yourself. Essex ain't too far from the east end of London, is it? I mean, Rolf's a nobody. Have you heard that already? You've heard that? Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. What, the geezer's a gopher? Yeah. He just got mixed up in it, mate, you know what I mean? Well, what was he doing with them, then? He's just basically their gopher. Drives them about, he's a messenger boy. You know what I mean? Okay, and you say the other two are top-notch? Tucker is, definitely. If I told you the names that are involved in it, I'll tell you the names now, because you've got no proof unless I come up with it anyway. Okay, yeah. You know who's involved with them? Who? Frankie Warren. In in what way? The money man. How can you prove that? Well, I, I'll prove it. Well, what do you know about it then? I know a fair bit, but what I can prove is different. Well, go on. Tell us about what you know then. I mean, I don't know who you are. It's all over territory and everything, mate. 
Okay, so so Warren is sort of providing them money for them to finance drug deals. Is that it? Nigel Ben's involved as well. What's Ben up to? Don't you know what Nigel Ben was doing before he was a boxer? All this bollocks. What what was he doing? Dealing in drugs? He's a fucking leg breaker, mate. Into drugs and everything. Is he? Tucker was his minder, wasn't he? Definitely. He wasn't so much his minder as his, as his mate, you know. They worked together. And Warren was involved in Tucker and Tate? Warren's a money man. I mean, Nigel Ben's got money now, but he didn't have always, did he? Mm, yeah. Warren's the money man. Yeah, and he was in with Tucker and Tate, was he? Yeah, definitely. They were all in the same firm. Okay, and, you know, who did they upset then? Sorry? And who did they upset? You know the fighting firemen? Yeah. Who, who are we on about? Come on, you tell me. Old, um... What's his name? Um, give me his initials, I'll tell you his name. Come on, tell me, go on. Um, I can't, I can't bloody think of his name. I know the bloke, the former champion of... Former champion boxer. Basildon. The one who shot Frank Warren. Yeah, that's right, yeah. All mixed up with that as well, mate. So what's he, what's, what's he got to do with it then? The different firms, mate. That's what it's all over. And who's in the other firm then? Jimmy Tibbs. Yeah, Tibbs. Yeah, the boxing trainer, whose family took over the East End of London after the craze got locked up. That's that's Tibbs, is it? Yeah. Who else then? Come on, um, there's somebody with the initials BB. Who, who are you on about? I think you're onto the wrong track, mate. Yeah, okay. Barry Earns mixed up in it as well. Do you want to meet one of our blokes? Um, you know, tell him what you know? Well, I've had it on me toes at the moment, mate, I'll tell you. I'm nowhere near the bloody place, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, and you say you were offered the contract. I was offered the contract. I didn't want to get involved. Okay, so where had they been? What had happened that night? Do you know? Sorry? What had happened the night they were killed? Well, someone had arranged a meet, a bloke called Nichols from Canning Town in East London. He arranged a meeting, Wally Nichols. He used to be an enemy of the Tibbs, mate, I'll tell you. You check up on your history for the last 15 years and you'll know what's been going on for a long time. He was an enemy of the Tibbs? Yeah. Nichols was? Yeah. So he arranged a meeting with these three? Yeah. Where? Wherever they fucking got done, mate, I'll tell you. Yeah, in Essex? Yeah. And they went there and what happened? Well, you know what happened. It's all over the bloody papers, mate. Okay, so were they ambushed or was Nichols... Well, I don't fucking know. I weren't there like. I don't know the ins and outs of it completely. I mean, the only reason I'm talking now is, one, I've got to fuck off forever, like, because if people think I've double-crossed them, which they do, right, because there's people being knocking on the door for me today, right, I'm going to fucking go as well, like, you know? It's all going to explode over the next couple of weeks, mate. There's going to be people fucking going everywhere, like, you know what I mean? And who tried to get you to do the contract? Look, mate, I'm not saying right now, I'm fucked, like, you know what I mean? I can't go to the fucking old bill, because there's bent old bill and everything in there. Was it Nichols or was it... No, mate. The ones who got done, most of them are fucking like, you know, you're playing a game of chess. They're not the kings or the queens. Like, one of them's a fucking pawn, you know what I mean? It's Rolf. He's a fucking pawn. Tucker's a fucking, you know, fairly major player, but nothing in the top league, you know what I mean? Okay, okay. So who's the king then? Frank Warren? Yeah. And is Warren in league with Tibbs? Work it out for yourself. And Wally Nichols? Nichols and Tibbs are enemies. You check back to London history 25 years ago. They was blowing each other's cars up 25 years ago. I mean, how do I know you're not fucking working with them? Well, I don't know who you are, do I? How do I know you're not tipping them off? Well, how much did they offer you to kill all these blokes? 30 grand. Are you in that game now? Eh? Are you into that? Mate, I'm not going to say nothing that's going to be, you know, incriminate myself... What I want is out of the country. It's a lot bigger than I am. And what's going to happen now then? Mate, it's going to be like fucking, it's going to be like, God knows. It's going to be like nothing you've ever seen before, mate. It's going to go on and on and on now. I reckon in the next three months there's going to be more fucking killings than God knows what. Okay. So what sort of drugs are they dealing in? Cocaine, everything. Ecstasy, everything. Everything, mate. Where there's money, they do it. Had they got money this lot, Tate and Tucker? Yeah, I mean, not mega money, but 
as I say, they're henchmen, really. I mean, Tucker's fucking, like, higher up than Tate, like, you know what I mean? But Tate's a fucking div without brains, really. Um, you know what I mean? If Tate wants to break someone's legs, he'll go and do it, like, you know what I mean? He's really Tucker's minder, but Tucker's nowhere near the top. Okay, so why would Nichols want them dead, then? They're enemies of the fucking Tibbs, like, you know what I mean? Check your history, mate. Okay, well, well if they're enemies of Tibbs and... Nichols is an enemy of Tibbs. No, no, Nichols and Tibbs are enemies. Yeah, and they were in with Tibbs, were they? Is 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 that what you're saying? Eh? That these three blokes were in with Tibbs? You're saying that Nichols arranged a meeting? Look, look I'll phone you back tomorrow, all right? Do you want to leave a number of us or, you know, somewhere we can contact? Well, I'm not going to just fucking leave you my number, am I, for fuck's sake? Uh, have you got a mobile? No, I'm not giving you nothing, like, you know what I mean? Okay, well, when were you offered the contract? A week ago. And how did that come about? Was it in a pub or something? Or, mate, they don't just walk up. <laughs> do, you, do you just think people just walk up and say, are you going to kill someone? Well, no, no. They know you, do they? Yeah. And did they explain any of the background to you? Or just said, we want them dead? Or, or what? Mate, <laughs> we just had a conversation. You don't ask details. You take the money. You do the business. But when I knew who was involved in it, when I heard the names they wanted done, I knew what it was all about. When Tucker's name was mentioned, I thought, fuck this, I ain't getting involved like, you know what I mean? And these people today, the only reason I'm talking to people like yourself is because I can't go to the fucking old bill, right? They've been round, they've knocked on two of my relatives' doors today looking for me. I'm a hundred miles away from London now. And why did you turn it down? Because I knew what was going to go on, mate. I ain't fucking daft, you know what I mean? I knew it would come back. Okay, so... Do you know who actually carried out the contract? Eh? Do you know who actually carried out the contract? Well, I don't like, you know what I mean? I'll tell you another thing. I'll get hold of Frankie tonight and see where he fucking is. And where do you think he is? Well, he won't be anywhere you want to fucking find him. Do you think he's hiding? <laughs> I'd be surprised if he's still alive, mate. Okay, so you think he was responsible for this? I'm not saying he's responsible for it, but I'm saying, have you heard from him lately? Have you tried to get hold of him today? No, okay, do you think he might have done it? Why would I say he's done it? You know him and Warren have had aggro with each other, don't you? Everyone knows that, don't they? Work it out, you know what I mean? He wouldn't have actually been the, the hitman, though, would he? It's been going on for years, mate, I tell you. Look, let's put it this way. If someone, look, half the fucking British boxing managers in this country won't have lives left if it all comes to... Well, well, okay, what about Warren? Wouldn't he be in some danger now? I'll fucking definitely try and get hold of Frank Warren tonight, you know what I mean? If I can get hold of Bert McCarthy tonight. Why? What, what's he up to? Well, just, just check. You're the reporters, like, right? you know what I mean? You're the next best thing to the old Bill for finding things out. Why don't you want to go to the police, then? I won't go to the old Bill, mate, I'm telling you. None of them will go to the old Bill. What about you? Don't, you know, don't, you don't trust them? Trust who? You know, the old Bill. <laughs> Do I fuck? They've got old Bill and everything, mate. I tell you, mate, there's going to be killings everywhere going on over this. What, coppers are involved? Listen, look, you want to meet, right? I've got tape records and everything. I'll prove what I'm telling you, right? What's it worth? Well, a lot, a lot of money. Hundred grand? Could be, yeah. But I want out the country as well, like, you know what I mean? Well, okay, where, where do you want to meet someone? Mate, I don't know who I can trust, that's the problem. Well, you can trust us. How do I know that? How do I know you're not in their pockets? Well, we wouldn't be, would we? We're, we're in the newspaper, we're, we're not... There's an MP involved as well. Teddy Taylor. Okay, what's he up to? Well, fuck me. It goes deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. It'll take three or four weeks to tell you everything. What, the, the MP for South End? Yeah, yeah, right, that area. It's all coming into place. If you would like to learn more about the Range Rover murders, then click on the video in front of you now. You'll also see the Essex Boys playlist, which has all of the videos concerning this case in one convenient folder. Many thanks for joining me for this video. I look forward to seeing you all again for the next one. Take care. Cheers.